U.S. Embassy in Iraq under attack by pro-Iran group. Storms building, shouting, death to America! Lights, fires, diplomats in hiding. Hello, internet friends. My name is Susie. I am your hostess, and welcome to It's Okay to be Clown Pilled. All right, let's break this conflict down so we can get a little bit of an understanding. So today, the Iranians stormed an American embassy. Yesterday, the Americans bombed a bunch of Iranians. The day before that, the Iranians showered missiles on Americans, killing one contractor and injuring a bunch of service people. And as a side note, do you ever notice that we never hear about the injuries on the Iranian side? Because, you know, obviously these aren't real people. They're just inanimate objects with no feelings whatsoever, no families, no emotions. Their families don't grieve. Just ignore it. According, you know, according to the media, these people just aren't real or something, or they're just a bunch of monsters like orcs. That's how the media makes the opposition look like a bunch of orcs. Anyway, so what is this conflict? Why is this going on? It's been going on at least since 2007, but who knows? It could have been going on a lot longer than that, way before the media started even recording it. What's the conflict over? Is it over the Strait of Hormuz? Is it over oil? Is it over farmland? That's a big one. See, the industrial, military industrial complex is securing farmland for, excuse me, for a lot of governments like the Chinese government is taking over South Africa because of the global cooling and they need farmland and they've pretty much destroyed all of their farmland. So they're going into other countries and stealing the farmland from the people Places like Africa are easy because the population are a bunch of greedy fucks and they're easily easily manipulated and unfortunately the Boer population doesn't have any political power and if you're in South Africa and you're a Boer either lay low or get out you know it's not best time right now to fight back your numbers are just too small that's my opinion but I'm just speaking from the outside I don't know I hate seeing people suffer That's just me. I don't care if I hate somebody. I just really don't want to see anybody suffer. But anyway, I'm getting too far off track. So why is this conflict going on? What is it that America wants that Iran has? Farmland, oil, right of passage, bodies for human trafficking, bodies for sex trafficking, bodies for slavery, for um, organ harvesting, gun running, drug running, What is it that the Americans, or I guess the coalition forces, want from Iran? And what is it that Iran is resisting? Well, we know that there's been some conflict in the Strait of Hormuz, but that's been going on for a while, and Iran has prevented oil tankers from leaving. I don't, I think it might be oil that they sold. Iran sold to people, and then they just take their tankers back or something. Really strange. But anyway, you know, you can't rely on the media to give you... 100% honest information. They always have to obscure it and twist the narrative around and make it a big fat lie. And then we have our fearless president here, troll-in-chief himself, Donald J. Trump. He is probably the funniest president that we've ever had, but he's also an airbag. Honestly, it's really hard to say if he's just making all these posts about Iran for uh, distraction purposes, or if there is an eventual war coming up with this country. If you're not an American, live outside of America, or even if you are an American and just don't know, uh, the president can't declare war on anybody. Congress has to do that. The last time Congress declared war was on Iraq back in, gosh, the 90s when we had I don't know if it was at the first or the second Gulf War when they captured Saddam Hussein and hung the guy and, and pretty much destroyed the country. The president can send in troops to a country, but he's supposed to get permission from Congress to stay there. Anyway, here are Iranian protesters. I don't even know what they're protesting. I can't speak Farsi or understand Farsi, so I don't even know what they're saying.
If anybody can understand what they are chanting about, please let me know in the comment section. Now, from what I understand, Iranians are prevented from getting information from the West. I'm sure they do. You know, you can't keep a people from uh, finding anything out, no matter how hard you try. If you ever have children, then you figure this out pretty quick. But I remember years ago when I was on Facebook, probably 10 years ago, I was talking to people who were in Iran. There was one lady who messaged me who said that she was having a dinner party and they served alcohol and the police came. The police arrested people, beat people, and even jailed people. It was pretty intense and she was telling me to tell everybody and to send help. You know how in some videos where I say, Americans, you are the beacon of hope for those who live under tyranny. You are the light in the dark. You are hope for those who have lost hope. I'm not joking. This is very serious. I am dead serious when I say that. The only reason why I know is because I have talked to people who have lived under tyranny and they would whisper to each other, the Americans will save us. Look at Hong Kong. They're waving our flags. They're hoping that we will come in and save them. Do you see how important our role is in the world and how we must fight tyranny in order to maintain the hope and freedom for people all over who live under tyranny? This is a very big responsibility and I do not take it lightly. Do you know how many hours I spend putting these videos together? I would rather do other things like I have so much dust in my house, I can throw seeds and start an organic garden. I can take a nap, I can go visit somebody, I can go write a letter, but I find that my responsibility as an American to maintain our country, our freedom, our liberty, our heritage, everything so much more important. So here I am making these videos. I make a video every single day so I do not lose focus, so my eyes do not go off the prize. It will be a very dark time for the world if we lose. And we have one of the worst tragedies coming up. We are going to have that Cascadia event. The government's going to do that where the Pacific Ocean comes and takes off most of the West Coast. We're going to have a civil war. We're, we're going to have skirmishes in places where there's a lot of foreigners. We're going to have fights with our government. And then our government is trying to pick a war with Iran. Why? Why does our government want to fight a war with Iran? You know, our military industrial complex is broke. The Fed keeps printing money, but eventually that system is going to crash. It's already crashing. And the only reason that they can keep printing money is because they're printing digital money. Other countries around the world are starting to refuse our money. They don't want it because it is not worth as much. And the price that it costs to even use American dollars and have the American military complex involved in their country and protect their sovereignty is becoming too high. So why is it that America wants to pick a war with Iran? Why is that? Is it because the military industrial complex needs another source of income? Is that what Iran is going to provide for it? War is what happens when a country runs out of money. And the last time that the United States ran out of money was in 2008, 2009. And even though we have wars going on all over the world, and we are pretty much like... Our, our military is pretty much like a bunch of paid mercenaries. We're being paid by the highest bidder to protect all these other countries. But the money is running out. All right, so here's an article that talks about what happens. It speculates what may happen if there is a war with Iran. And how is this war even going to start? It could be started by the United States. It could be started by Iran. It could be started by the EU, NATO, or... It could be started by a false flag. Oh, yeah. Well, every other war that we've had has been started by lies anyway. Why not? What's, what's going to make these people start telling the truth? They never tell the truth. They won't tell the truth. They're a bunch of greedy parasites, and they like suffering. You know, people have been breeding out of control for years and years, and 
there's going to be a massive culling of the population because we don't have enough resources to support the population. And it's a really shitty way to go. You know, abortion is legal and a lot of people are getting abortions. I mean, amongst the black community, abortion is just staggering. I mean, the number of abortions just in the United States, absolutely staggering. So the elites have put things in place to prevent the population from going bananas, but it's gone crazy anyway because the populations that are being fed that usually will call themselves aren't calling themselves, but I've already made a video about that. So why is it and what is it that's going to start this war with Iran and what is going to be the cost? The cost that we are going to pay, the, a glo our global community, I guess, you know I'm not a globalist, but the global community is going to be, pay a huge price if there is one more war and war with Iran because Iran has a lot of uh, tools in their toolbox. They've got nuclear weapons and they're just pretty much going to bomb the shit out of everybody or they're probably going to sneak in nuclear weapons and uh, just set them off or biological weapons. You know, uh, during the Iran and Iraq wars back in the late, uh, it was in the 80s, I think, the 70s or the 80s, they would, uh, each side would send their biological weapons and just wipe out uh, villages of people in the U.S. media used to, it's probably in the 80s, I think, used to show just all these dead people. You know, it was really weird because, you know, they won't show dead Americans, but they'll show dead foreigners because, you know, like I said, the military always dehumanizes the other guy like they dehumanize us white folks. Anyway, uh, so they dehumanized all these dead people in Iran or Iraq. I can't remember which side. I think it was both countries where they were killing each other with biological weapons. And so that's what we're going to be seeing again, folks. We're going to be seeing... And we already have all these biological weapons that are being dropped on us anyway. I mean, do you know anybody who's not on any sort of a medication? Do you know anybody who's disabled? I mean, there's so many disabled people. I, when I was young... I only think that I knew like one mentally retarded kin kid and nobody had problems. Nobody had health problems. Nobody had uh, mentally retarded children or autistic children or special needs children. This is an absolutely new phenomenon. And these are probably, we're probably like this because of bioengineered weapons or viruses or whatever. All right, internet friends, that's all I got for now. I really appreciate you all, and if uh, you want to support me, please go to my About page, click a link. I have um, all kinds of ways to support me, or you could just send me an email and tell me you love me. All right, internet friends, thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your comments below.